Uh, let's get into these rollouts, though. Yeah. Um, so many of them. So many of them are happening lately. There's two main ones we want to get into, and a little other uh, things as well. But this CLB, not CLB, good Lord. Her loss. Yeah, her loss. <laughs> <laughs> Rollout. <laughs> You already you had some things in particular because you've been watching that one more closely than yeah. me. I didn't realize how much has happened. So kind of break down some of the things you're seeing with that one. Yeah, man. So the, her loss is the the Drake and Twenty One Savage collab album. I mean, the rollout for it really started probably as of making this maybe like two three weeks ago. There was like a tweet that went out that was like some I can't remember if it was DJ Academics or some other publication was like, hey, there's a rumor that Drake and Twenty One Savage are putting a project out. I think Drake. But 21, one of them put like the cap emoji. Basically, like, nah, he lying, right? Oh, so you think the rumor was paid for? Yeah, 100%. You think the rumor was paid for? Yes, bro. It was a rumor. It was a leak. They said it's nah, cap. No, nah, I don't believe it. <laughs> but you got, we have to think about one, how much artists like 21 Savage and Drake don't leave the house or don't even talk as much. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't just see them being the type of people moving around just telling everybody that's happening. Mm -hmm. Their team at this point are, are very high level teams, so they're probably not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Drake is Drake, 21, 21. There's no way like, I mean, I guess there's a way, but I don't think any engineer would risk that. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I could tie to was like, oh, this is promotion. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was such a random, such a random piece of information that didn't seem too far out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I can see that. I can see Drake and 21 Savage doing a project together. So now, yep. now I believe it. Like, it's definitely coming. They've been, like, besties for the last, like, two years. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Hanging out, showing, like, showing up together. So, like, when I saw it, I was like, okay, this. Well, at the time, I didn't think it was a part of the rollout. I just was like, okay, you know, 21 said cap. Man, it's cap. You know what I'm saying? At that point, you just got to go by what the artists say. I think a few days later, there was an official announcement of it. Um, they dropped like a promo video for it or something like that. And then I was like, oh shit. There it is. There it is, bro. He wasn't lying. Now now I'm thinking this is definitely the start of the rollout. So it was originally supposed to come out, I think, last Friday. But um, last Friday had a lot of releases. They were like, Rihanna you know, dropped like her first song in like forever. It was like a Chloe Bailey project that came out. There was a bunch of stuff that came out right. around that time. And so they got pushed back. They delayed it. They said it had something to do with, I think, like 40 getting sick and, you know, stuff not getting mixed. Which I'm like, oh, I don't believe that, man. Yeah, like, don't believe that yeah, one. Bro, like, mm, Y'all saw that Rihanna single about to drop. <laughs> but still, or, you know, maybe they planned for something like that and that was just another part of the rollout. They wanted mm -hmm. to push it out, you know, keep it going out. So then we get into this week, which is when all of the five stuff really started. For every one. And so I think, I don't remember which one came first, but the two biggest things from the rollout was one that did a, a fake Howard Stern interview that's funny as hell, like if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I love when 21 Savage does like personality stuff because you you don't, you know, he's, yeah. he's great at being, showing his personality in a genre where a lot of those artists don't typically show their personality. Right. And so they're very like one dimensional in their personality. Right. So they do the fake Howard Stern interview uh, and then they do like a fake Tiny Desk concert. I ain't seen that one. Yeah, bro. So they do like a fake Tiny Desk oh, concert, which me personally, I mean, if you pull the video up, you'll see, bro, the set looks like the real set. I personally, if I was Tiny Desk, I'd be like, man, I could just do the real Tiny Desk concert. We could let you make it comedic. And we could have made this work. Why Why y'all had to go, you know what I'm saying, know, fake, fake it to that degree? <laughs> let me see. Where is it? I don't uh, Got it. Is it this? Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at it, bro. It looks just like it. Yeah, they they wrong for that. Like, just like it, bro. So y'all could have came and used the real setup. Um, so they do the fake Tiny Desk concert. They got a bunch of content flowing out. They tease the track art or the track, um, the cover art for it. And the cover art is this popular model named Suki. Yep. Um, so at first I thought she was a, a big TikToker, but she's a she's like a pretty like well known model. So you know a little bit of influencer marketing, right? All of it's really influencer marketing to a degree. A little bit of that. Um, going back to like some some super. Localish stuff. I remember. I think they had maybe had a billboard out here or something. I know Twenty One Savage had like his birthday party like a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure there was some promotion around that, right? So they had the machine kind of building up to it to the whole point. Oh yeah, that's her right there, Suki. And so the however you choose to look at it, wherever your moral compass points. But the piece that led resistance for it was the controversy that's built around because of this line that Drake has towards Meg Thee Stallion. And so I hit you about it. And I was looking and I was like, man, it made me think, bro, there's, there's three C's <laughs> to a good rollout. Talk about it. Three C's, bro. There's creativity, mm. consistency, check, 
Man, controversy. Got him. <laughs> if you were able to hit all three of those points in a really like good way, way that makes sense to your culture and what they're paying attention to, you probably will have a successful rollout. I think the controversy part is maybe like a double asterisk, like you don't have to do it. But if you add it on top and there's an there's an enemy for it, it's gonna hit. It's say gonna the three hard. again. Creativity, Creative. consistency, controversy. I'd say if it's not controversy, controversy per se, it needs to be conversation. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just because yeah, you know people misconstrue controversy as having to be something so wrong, you know, yeah. problematic and things yeah. like that. So if you're not comfortable with controversy in your conversation, brand, better. conversation, yeah. create some conversation around something that has nothing that well has something to do with the music, and then also not it, it creates a different conversation, right? Because like his his line with the Meg thing started with, "Oh, he's dissing Meg." It's a music conversation, mm -hmm. right? We're talking about the song, and it's now in the the at this point, like 14 hours of the album has been now has evolved back into like a domestic abuse conversation. People, you know, making fun of like domestic abuse victims and things like that. So it's, it's evolved from a, a music conversation to a much broader conversation. See, I've been off the internet a bit, bro, lately. So tell me about this domestic abuse conversation. Like, what do you mean it's involved into that and why as a relation to this album? Yeah, because like Meg made some tweets that was just like, um, and I'm kind of like paraphrasing, but. She was basically saying something like, your favorite rappers come out and, and make fun of a, a woman, like a, a woman that got shot by a man, and you know what I'm saying? Something, something, y'all kiss my ass. That, that was Wait, the gist what? of what? That shit ain't fair. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Did they make fun of her because she got shot or something around that incident? Or Yeah, what? Did you hear the line? No, I didn't. I, I told you I've been off. Oh, yeah, you've been off the internet. I've legit been off, bro. I haven't checked it out yet. I okay. don't know the exact line because I haven't gotten to that part of the album yet. You know, small disclaimer. But it's something like, something about the style. The, Let me see. Pretty much, he says that Tory Lanez didn't really shoot her. That's basically what he says in the song. He's basically like, yo, she lying. You know what I'm saying? Um... But he makes like a, a a little double triple entendre off of it. Let's let's see what exactly what went down. Oh yeah, there it is. This bitch lying about getting shot, but she's still a stallion. Shorty said she graduated. She ain't earned enough. I learned enough. Play your album track one K. I heard enough. But that's the first mm. line they got. This bitch lying about getting shot, but she's still a stallion. Very 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 mm. very Dang. good. Yeah, exactly. Dang. That's what you missed on the internet. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah, Jeez. so it evolved from, oh, Drake diss Meg to, oh, Drake is making fun of, you know, uh, abuse victims. And that's now the bigger conversation that's mm -hmm. been had on, like, Twitter and, and the internet in general. <laughs> so the conversation was started out musically and then built yeah. out to more, like, social issues, you know what I'm saying? Dang. Drake didn't see that one coming. He didn't see that one coming, right? That next step, that slip door, <laughs> he was walking in line. Nah, nah, because I know he probably wouldn't have. Yeah. Nah, you got to know. Him and, I think, Tory Lanez are friends, so. I mean, look, I get the... I get addressing a line and saying that and thinking it's going to, you know, create a little something, but the slip into making fun of domestic abuse. Oh, yeah, yeah. That twist. Yeah, he didn't see that coming. Nah, he, he, yeah, he, he, was, he wasn't trying to play with that. Yeah, so, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's created a conversation. It's hey. definitely done that. Uh, conversation. And, I mean, I know we're going to get into it, um, but that was even something similar with, like, the Taylor Swift thing. Like, there was a conversation that started around her role. She had her controversy slash conversation C no. moment. You know what I'm saying? Let's get straight into it. What was uh, what was hers again? So, she has this video that she dropped. I don't remember which, exactly which video it is because I'm, I'm not a Swifty. You know what I'm saying? But right. the in the video, she, like, steps on the scale, and the scale says, like, fat. And so, it's her talking about her body positivity issues, things like that. And the internet just took it and ran with it, bro. Oh, yeah. yeah. Her her community loves that type of stuff. Yeah. They definitely love that type of stuff. Yeah. But it's been pretty intense on both sides. Like, people talking about, you know, she's fat shaming. She, she's, you know, contributing to the, the the um what's the word I'm looking for? The the anxiety and stress that people in that community might be feeling. And there's people on the other side that's saying, like, no, like, she's just talking about her experiences with her weight, how she feels about it. She's not making fun of the community. So, But it's created the conversation of, hey, is Taylor Swift fat shaming? Is she fat shaming because she thought she was fat? Yeah, and the video is like, I mean, the, when she steps on the scale, it just says fat. But the way it's kind of been interpreted, like, this is how she's talking more about, like, her self-esteem issues and, like, right. how she felt about her body and things. Man. And people are like, yo, why is it bad that when you look at the scale, it says fat, right? And now it's, it's, they're taking it to the context, I think, of, like, are you insinuating that fat is bad because you in this video feel bad about the scale saying fat? You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I said the conversation evolved to... Yo, Taylor Swift is fat shaming. And then now it's both sides of it. Either defending her very intensely 
or going at her very intensely. This is what I love about today, man. It's so <laughs> easy to create conversation, dog. Because yeah. Pete, just when you have that scale, especially. Yeah. Somebody gonna get mad. Because that makes no sense, man. Somebody gonna get upset. You can't bro. talk about your own experience. <laughs> People always are gonna project their insecurities and feel like you you calling them out mm -hmm. one way or another. That's that is interesting. Yeah, but it's that, that is interesting. But even even Ty Swift gotta have a controversy, bro. And I don't yeah. going back to what you said about Drake, I don't think she planned for it. Like she Not probably that, yeah, that that, yeah. they always gonna take it at angle you didn't mean to. That's <laughs> yeah. just the nature of it. Just like politics, bro. They can flip every single thing into something negative. Yeah. You think you're good. <laughs> nah, nah. Not if it doesn't fit my agenda. But I Taylor has been known for this, and it's interesting because this particular project, it wasn't as heavy leaning thematically and narrative wise in terms of like being about an ex mm -hmm. and using the story of who she's dating that was a huge yeah, conversation con yeah. controversy type thing that she would do just track after track after track and that was like the story that you put around um taylor but now this one everything that i've gathered has been like like confidence i'm renewed i'm renewed yeah, right yeah. i'm renewed i got baptized she she entered her bad bitch era, bro no facts like, that's like, that's the energy she's yeah. giving it and she's giving it it's like i'm being the bad bitch that i can be yeah with her brand yeah 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 <laughs> You know, it's not all the way, but I'm trying to be a little bit more dark. Yeah, you know, and cause she's trying to create wiggle room, and you can go hard with that and Miley Cyrus it. I'm just gonna break the mold and give myself wiggle room, or you can play it safe and conservative, which is more Beyonce and Taylor Swift, yeah. and they evolve slowly over time, creating that wiggle room. Yeah. So you know, you could go either route, and that's why I always say when people stress so much about their brand and getting caught in a box but it's like if you know what you're doing you can always get out the box you yeah. can give it some time yeah. right but you can just in that scenario alone rihanna molly cyrus oh we break the mold quickly yeah. good girl going bad literally with rihanna molly cyrus just did it and showed it but then you got taylor and beyonce right which is funny you got those two sides of the yeah. fence but still they they both had both characters yeah right and you do it over time. So, no, nah, it's it's interesting what Taylor's doing, though, because she's breaking records. Yeah, bro. And I think, too, with the brand thing is interesting. Is like, I don't know. I always look at, like, when you're a big artist and you have that much scale, a rebrand is just, like, having different conversations with your audience and yes. then showing different parts of your life or your lifestyle. So, it's like, hey, maybe I was very family-oriented and super clean, and all you ever saw from me was me at my niece's birthday and, you know what I'm saying, me at, you know, I don't know, at the family cookout. Now I want to be this super wild person and you see me at the clubs, at the parties, hanging out with certain celebrities. At the time when they were the nice, clean family person, they probably were also doing the party club things, right? But now it's, hey, I'm going yep. to show you this side. I'm going to talk about things in a different light. And that's going to slowly over time make you see me in a different way. That to me is all a rebrand is. I know it's deeper than that because of the things you have to kind of like execute things a certain way. But that's really what it is. Like, hey, I am now a different person. And I want to talk about and show you different things. That's all rebrand is, me. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. That's yeah, just showing different parts of yourself, and that goes back to artists stressing out about showing too much of themselves at the beginning, not mm. realizing. Yeah, just take your time, and you can show a different part of yourself because that's going to be a part of your rebrand. Yeah, or a reintroduction to expand how people see you. Yeah, and, but nobody can catch it all at once anyway. So why try? Yeah, 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 and then. Right, well, let me pull this up. So this is the headline. Was Taylor Swift wrong to use the word fat in a video? This woman says, that's how I used to feel whenever I weighed this myself. So I'm sure she's, what is it, sympathizing with Taylor. On the other side, you got to look at these numbers that Taylor's hitting. Like, which, bring it all, bring it full circle before we even get into that. Because Taylor broke, what? 511 records. Yeah, I think I think officially <laughs> like <laughs> officially 73 they said yeah. whether it was iTunes. She was literally every single song on the top 10. I think she was the first person to do that, not just first woman. Yeah. She um, beat out, I think Drake was the last person to get close. He had like five of yeah. the top 10 or something. But where is where can I find this? What I, you know what I'm looking for. There we go. Bam. See y'all y'all actually can't see this, but I, if you go to Spotify, it actually says 2022 Taylor Swift at the bottom of Midnight's, uh, well, the Midnight's uh, album. Now, why is that relevant? 
this is what the record label imprint is usually showing right here. That's what you usually see. Record label, maybe distributor or just something like that, right? Taylor is indie, y'all. Like, she for real indie. It's probably like Bad Bunny indie. She might be sharing pieces of her company with people at the level she is, but she's indie. She owns her record label. She owns her company, just like Bad Bunny owns part of, a, what is it, Riser? It started with an R. Yeah, I don't know that label. Like, yeah, whatever the label yeah. is. Like, Taylor's killing it. She's killing it. And, yo, when she re-released her albums, and basically, instead of taking those albums done uh, down, let me see if I can find it. She just put like Taylor edition. Yeah. In parentheses. Yeah. So the fans know. Let me go stream this one instead of the other one. Yeah. Like Which I do. She's bro, she's gaming the system crazy. But she she literally like you know an artist is big and has power when they make a move and then the whole industry shifts around it within like seventy two hours. Cause that's what happened <laughs> with that. Like, bro, it was like within two days, the industry as a whole, like Billboard, all these different people had rules about how you can do that now. And it's like, yeah. they had that, they were like, oh no, hell no, we gotta, we gotta get ahead of that. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. She's about to spark a revolution. <laughs> Just like that conversation with the bundles, right? Yeah. Remember, yeah. Uh, I think you had shared one, one of those videos too, where it's like, all right, she's still doing bundles, but the bundles have to be around the music. So they got rid of like that, the yes. merch bundles and stuff like that. Well, no, it's, they didn't get rid of it. Now the rules for it is like the, Everything that's in the bundle has to be for sale separately on the website. So you have to be able to buy everything individually. Right. And it has to all ship out the week of release for the account. Yes, that's what yeah. it is. That's so, what it is. So it's like you got to have the yep. infrastructure to even right. make that happen. To, to play the, the bundle. Now you got to have the money to even be able to play the bundle game. To actually play the bundle game, yeah. which is different because now you have to prepare for that yeah. months in advance to be able to provide all this merch and ship all these things so yeah. you put yourself at a risk having all this inventory on hand and not necessarily being able to get off the merch yeah. or if you get off it it's not necessarily for the first week which is not hitting those yeah. uh the, those metrics you want so because basically billboard was trying to prevent people from selling merch right week one and then not actually shipping it till months later because they yeah. really can't do it. So it's like you just finesse them getting a little pre sale. Yeah, exactly. And you still waiting for your big baller brand shoes yeah. five years later. <laughs> so like basically, the <laughs> game was got those. the game was really getting finessed with pre orders, like especially yeah. like in rap, rap, bro. All yeah. that they they were killing it with like the different brand collaborations, right? X rapper might do a t shirt drop with V loan or something mm -hmm. uh, to promote the album. And like you said, this shit ain't coming out for three months, but hey, yep. they bought that today. Yep. And so I, I understand why that rule change got made, but like looking at the Taylor Swift situation, even the new rules, it's like, man, they really have either you gotta like really believe in that you're gonna sell it enough that it's even worth it for you to attempt that strategy. Cause imagine like Taylor Swift, I don't know, buying up a warehouse of like half a million pieces and they're only selling like 20,000 or something. That would, be, that would hurt, you know? Oh, yeah. And if you're a small artist and you're thinking like, oh, man, I'm going to do at least 10K, you know what I'm saying, yeah. this, this week and you only sell 200 t-shirts, like that shit would hurt, you know what I'm saying? Because you, mm -hmm. you have to pre-buy in order to even be able to play the game. So now you're going to think long and hard before you decide, do I want to try mm -hmm. this merch strategy? Is the the potential outcome of it even worth me attempting to do with the game? It Would I be much better off still attempting maybe my pre-order strategy or regular merch selling strategy but there's a lot lower overhead and a lot less risk involved with it now because I'm not trying to play that game anyway. So, right. you know, so it's like, I think it's going to make artists think real hard about if they even want to game the system. We're only going to probably see major label artists and or artists with a lot of money really gaming it because it's not worth it for 99% of the other artists. Yeah, I think that's a good way to look at it because it's not eliminating a game, it's increasing the cost of the game, mm -hmm. you know, the price of entry. So fewer people are going to play it your people gonna take the risk and the people who do it gonna do it way less often mm -hmm. so that makes a lot of sense and then you look at the way taylor did it from a standpoint of she all went. these incentives yeah. right it's like oh i got a couple of songs on this uh vinyl that aren't on spotify got yeah. some songs on spotify that are on the vinyl and i think she had maybe one other medium that she also provided throughout oh no oh, also she had the show tickets right yeah got either they got pre no they, they didn't even get the ability to buy show tickets i don't think i think, I think they it got was the a, ability to buy them early yeah right because all the stuff she did pre-rollout was pointing toward vinyl sale like she was going yes. hard for the vinyl hard. sale. yeah hard and probably in anticipation of this 
You said what? Why do you think vinyl sales was a focus to start off? I think in t- anticipation of this. Like, they, you know, because going back to what we just said, like, if you're an artist that knows you have the capacity and resources to play the game, like, you're going to try to understand, like, what do I have to do to, to, to truly maximize my shot at winning this mm-hmm. part of the game? Oh, we got to sell a bunch of products and make sure they can they can move out first week. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's only focus on selling product then. Like, let's we don't care about pre-save links, right? We don't care about early downloads and nothing like that. We want people to buy this product that is going to help me shoot to the top. And this is the thing. <laughs> you want to focus on the metric that makes the most sense. Yeah. That's going to have the biggest impact. And I feel like a lot of people get caught up in their rollouts trying to do too many things. It doesn't mean you're going to have a simple rollout where there's only one thing going on because a lot of the best rollouts have multiple things going on. But you still got to find out which one is the big domino. Mm -hmm. Like If if all else fails, if this one works, I'm going to get at least 70% out of this that I want out of it. And for her, like you said, that's the 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 uh, the vinyls, because also you got to think about it like streaming, the streams are going to happen. Yeah. Right, so don't just focus on that. Like you said, pre save and like, she don't fuck with streaming, and she doesn't mess with streaming. She doesn't like streaming. And yeah. She doesn't like streaming, right? Yeah. For a variety of reasons: the money, the the control, all that, the data, all that stuff. But so it's like, where can I focus, and how can I make this a fan experience? She's one of the best at making like fan experiences. Even if you don't, you might not check her music or whatever, but like if you track how she uh, interacts with her fans and how hard they go for, her, yeah. <sighs> Uh, Taylor's probably she's she's definitely top ten right now. I'm just saying top ten because I don't want to say number two. <laughs> I don't want to be like number one and then, and then start some conversations. But she in the top ten for sure. I can say that comfortably. She damn near in her own league, bro. Well, it is in her own league for real, for real. It's not, you know, we got Bad Bunny. I mean, she beat Drake, bro. Drake, Bad Bunny, The Weeknd, Adele. Are they the only ones that really get close, bro? And they're not even. I don't think uh, close. That's a fact because what they said she got. Over a million sales in a week, which it was like what one point five or one point seven this yeah, time around. Somewhere there, yeah. And she's the first person to do that since, since her, her. Yeah. Like. Yeah, and it was like, I think it was the the Beatles had the first however many top uh, Billboard, you know, multiple Billboards, and then mm-hmm. I don't remember if it was her and then Drake and then her again or like her and then but like she just keeps consistently coming up in these very high level achievement. You know what I'm saying? And these yeah. high level achievements and conversation is like who who is not many artists like doing that consistently. So. I've I've personally earned a lot of respect for Taylor Swift over the years because of that. Because like you know, you can say what you want about her music, but she be out here trailblazing for the industry, bro. Like yeah. on some real shit. Her moves, yeah. bro. You gotta watch her moves, man. Yeah. yeah. And bro, I've been so deep into the the Taylor Swift sphere because of that document I sent you, bro. Like it's crazy. I'll be seeing Taylor Swift <laughs> in my sleep, <laughs> dreaming about <laughs> dreaming about her rollout and her numbers, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> Yo, we <laughs> we got the whole content breakdown. We, we got to put that that document out. Yeah, we'll put that. We'll Not put yet. That I got to finish it, but you know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you watching. Fun fact, every time you soak up one of these gems, you get a little bit smarter from these clips. So if you want to be a gem seeker, collect all the gems, keep watching. I'll see you in the next clip.